Hello and welcome to Heart of a Hobbit here on the official Lotro stream, uh, Twitch stream. I'm Will Redhead and I'll be taking you around the Spring Festival that just started today. Thank you for bearing with me for a few moments there. We had some technical issues. I apologize. So we are here and we are good to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so here we are on uh, Lord of the Rings Online, and I'm going to take you around the Spring Festival. I'm so excited! I love the Spring Festivals. I love all the festivals that happen in the game. Um, and there's there's a lot of things you can do in Lord of the Rings Online, right? From questing alongside the Fellowship, and going into dungeons and instances, and gathering with other folks and socializing, um, to enjoying these large-hearted festivals that can be found throughout the year. So that's where I like to specialize is on the festivals. So uh, we're going to go ahead and jump on in here. So I have my little hobbit here. She's um, still decked out with a lot of the uh, festival stuff from the winter, from the Yule Fest. But we're going to go in and find out what it's like when you go to the Spring Festival. So we're going to log on in here. Hopefully she hasn't been staying there so long she forgot how to get in there. So thank you so much, those of you who have joined us today, for bearing with me on those technical challenges. I was pushing a button that was one button too many. So um, there we go. Now I know for next time. As you may have figured out, this is my first time on the Lotro Twitch stream. Uh, so thank you for coming along and joining me on this inaugural journey. I plan to come and be here with you every week. So it's going to be a fun time with all of us here together. Okay, so here we are getting logged in. And when we first log on, there's going to be a, um, an auto bestowed quest that shows up. So that's going to be right down here. Um, and it says, hey, you know, get ready to celebrate spring. So now what I have is on a bunch of my characters, I have to already go ahead and automatically accept these quest rings when they come up. So that way when you're when I'm out in landscape and um, you know it's the defeat 10 of the worms and you're in the middle of defeating one, I don't want to lose track and have to click on that later. So I went ahead and have it auto uh, choose those. So before I got in here, it went ahead and did that. So the remote quest has already been put into my quest log. I didn't have to accept it. Uh, so we are going to celebrate spring and we're going to do spring instances. There we go. Uh, travel to the hedge maze in Breland to participate in the spring celebration. We're going to do that. So we're ready to advance that, which is going to give us some legendary item experience because I do have a legendary item on this character. Maybe I don't. If I do, it will. If I don't, it won't. That's simple. All right. And we have a map to the spring festival. So get ready, ready yourself for travel to the hedge maze in the horse fields of Breland to experience this year's spring celebration. Hurry and join the festivities. All right. So we finished that. And now in my inventory, I have a map to the spring festival. So I can use that if I want to. So sure, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go map to the spring festival. I seem to have lost something. Oh, that's okay. It'll show up eventually. Okay, so what it does is when you first use that map, it does bring you to the uh, part of the festival area. But where we are is, here I'm going to go stand on this hill because I'm a hobbit and I like standing on hills to show you where to find things. So where we are is the, um, is the hedge maze. And if you look around, you'll see that over here we've got some more of the, the festival the festival grounds area. So, um, so what we want to do is even though we've shown up here and all these people are here with quest rings, we don't want to start with them yet. So we are going to go over into the main area past, you know, we're going to run past the, uh, the horse racing area. So, you know, don't stand there too long. You never know who might show up and run you down. Oh no, that'd be bad. All right, so we're going to run over here. And there's a lot of people here today, which is so awesome. Um, and this area does not have layers. So sometimes it does get really, really busy. Because if it had layers, it would be showing up over on my screen. Wow. Oh, my. So our quest giver is, is in there. Is, is back there. <laughs> we're going to run in here with our little hobbit legs and find this guy. 
<laughs> Here he is. Poor Sergeant Tom. <laughs> he is surrounded. Oh my goodness. Well, when you get here, though, that's who you need to talk to. So the first thing he's going to do is he's got these two quests for you. He's got the Taste of Spring. So a Taste of Spring says there's lots to do during the Spring Festival. Get out there and get involved and earn rewards and give me some breathing room over here. <laughs> so this is Participate in Spring Festival Activities. And this is your daily wrapper. So um, for those of you who are new to doing the festivals here in Lotro, uh, you'll have like a wrapper that goes around um, like a daily wrapper. So that's like go do 10 things that are a part of this larger thing, you know, 10 festival activities basically. Um, and when you do that, when you are able to do that in one day. Like you should be able to get in here, do your uh, do this uh, festival wrapper, the daily wrapper, uh, and leave. But you don't have to. So, you know, if you've only got... 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever, to jump in, do a couple quests, or maybe you just like a certain couple of quests and you don't care about the rest. Um, you know, then maybe you pop in, you do five, and then you leave and come back tomorrow and do the same five. You can do that. That equals 10. So first of all, though, I'm going to go ahead and accept this because that's going to give me um, three of the spring leaves. And the spring leaves are our barter. Um, that's our, our currency for this festival. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and accept that. And then... I'm gonna hit my U button because there's no way I'm clicking on him again. Uh, there he is. So, welcome friend, I'm mighty glad to see folks so interested in our hedge maze. It happens, it so happens, that I have some wonderful rewards that might amaze a maze goer like you. Like yourself, get it? A maze, a maze goer. Yeah, I like that. Uh, okay, so here's a, the splendor of spring. And he says, welcome friend. Uh, if you're here for the Spring Festival, why, yes I am, how did you know? Uh, I recommend you look around and participate in many of the fun activities around here. If you're not here for the Spring Festival, maybe you should be. Yeah, that's fair. The, uh, for these folks that participate in many of our activities, there might just be a reward in store for you, so get out there. And remember, if you get lost in the hedge maze, just yell for help. Uh, this quest cannot be canceled, so once you pick it up, it is going to stay in your quest log for the rest of the festival or until you complete it. Um, and I have never completed it. So, yes, I wanted to come through with this character because Adam Mancha has never done the Spring Festival, this, this iteration of, of uh, Adam Mancha. So uh, we're going to run all over and experience everything fresh and brand new. So now this is Complete a Bustling Bloom, the intro version. We're going to get that in just a moment. He's going to give that to us, and that is another level of wrapper. When you finish that, you get these, all these fancy things. You're going to get big ones of Splinter. You're going to get uh, a scrap of an Essence Reclamation Scroll, which you put those together and you get a full scroll. Uh, we're going to get some spring leaves. We're going to get that optional crafting ingredient. So lots of really good stuff there. So we accept that from him. And now he's got another quest that has shown up that wasn't there before. So now he says, okay, a bustling bloom intro. Hello, so there are many rewards that await those who participate in the Spring Festival. And for those who celebrate for many days, that's the key, the rewards are all the grander. So remember that Taste of Spring, which was our daily wrapper? You do that four times, and that completes this Bustling Bloom intro. So if we complete this Bustling Bloom intro, that completes that other quest that we picked up. Uh, so, And then that other quest we picked up basically is do this these bustling bloom, intro, intermediate, and fi final, I think it is. Uh, and that finishes that upper wrapper, which gives us even more stuff. So here we're going to get figments of splendor and another optional crafting ingredient, virtue experience. So all sorts of good stuff there. So I find the festival is a really great time to come in and um, really beef up my characters. You can get a lot of experience in here, too. So if you're not like in a turtle stone group, uh, this can be a really quick way to level up. OK. So I'm going to get out of that area. So out here we have a bunch of things going on. And hang on a second, I'm going to grab a quick drink. So, all right, so we're going to go and see hi, say hi to a number of people. And so let's start with this fellow over here. Arn Bullrush has a couple of things that he's going to uh, show us about. One of these is a daily. Oh, hang on a second, I'm trying to... Mm -hmm. I'll find that in a minute. Okay. So uh, one of these is a daily, and one of these is one time per festival. 
So Born Aloft in Springtime is a, a much longer storyline. Uh, it takes us through a whole really neat story that takes us in, that uh, joins the elves with the hobbits and um, some really, really cute stuff. So we'll go ahead and start, we'll go ahead and read this here. So he says, Adamantia, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is a human here, this Arn Bullrush that's talking to us. He says, there are many enjoyable activities with which to celebrate the arrival of springtime, and many of them can be found right here at the festival grounds. I know you will have a good time. But if I might steal your ear for just a moment, can I ask you to help me with something? It is a small matter, a trifle really, but I am a bit concerned about a number of recent arrivals here at the grounds. There are three of them, and they may have been on the road for a long time. I am to understand that they have made the journey all the way from Gondor. They call themselves herbalists, and while I would not turn anyone away, they have made themselves something of a nuisance here already. Could you make sure they are happy, and more importantly, that they do not bother my patrons with any more of their strange questions? I really appreciate this, Adamantia, and I'll see that you get some extra spring leaves for helping me out. So, um, like I said, this is one time. This is going to start off this, this quest chain. And um, at the end of this quest chain, we're going to get 18 festival leaves. So it's a, it's a really nice um, reward to kind of get you going because some of the rewards start off at like 20 leaves or five leaves. So it gets you going. Now the horse, if you want to get the festival steed, because there's usually a festival steed you can get, and that one usually comes in at you know, like 100 or 80 or 60. I can't remember off the top of my head. We'll go back and talk to Tom in a few minutes, um, Tom the Surrounded. He, uh, he is one of the festival barterers, although there is another one out in Doolin, so that might be an easier place to go. Okay, um, I think what I'll do is, and we're gonna go ahead and accept this quest, and I'm going to, hold on. Here, sweetie. Text, text the people. All right. The other one that Arn has is Pretty Parched Party Goers. <laughs> so that's cute. And it is a daily. Uh, we can do this every day during the festival. And he says, I just walked around the festival grounds and do you know what I saw? When my disappointed eyes beheld parched party goers everywhere, I turned. No spring festival can be properly enjoyed without the delightful notes of a smooth spring wine. I have some spring leaves for you if you will pick up jugs of spring wine from the tables in the center of the festival grounds and deliver them to the tables on the outskirts. Uh, so we can do this every day. So we'll go ahead and take that. And this is a quick one that a lot of people come in and do. But we're gonna continue on. Sorry, let's go ahead and clear out this quest log. We're gonna go ahead and continue on with this quest that we just got. So we've got an elf standing right here watching the activities. We've got a hobbit over here sitting here watching the activities. And mostly they're watching this group over here, these herbalists, as they call themselves. So we've got, here I'll put the names on so you can see who they are. So we've got Milgamel, we've got Brudhir, uh, let's see, we've got Nethlas. Um, so they're over here and where well, this guy's just, you know, laughing it up and there's all sorts of entertainment happening over here. So we're gonna go and talk, let me take the names off because it's a little crowded in the area at the moment and having names on is a little, a little much. So we'll go talk to this lady. Hello, my lady, what's going on? She says, ah, have you come here to assist the herbalists, Adamantia? We are always in need of such assistance for the pursuit of knowledge never ends, as I am sure you are well aware. I was the apprentice of Galathir, the herb master of Minas Tirith, and he sent me forth to research the plants and mosses of Athelion and the wastes before Mordor. He did not agree with some of the conclusions I made upon my return and sought to dismiss me. Not only that, but he has taken a new apprentice, Actually, he's taken two and sent them north to Breland to confirm some of his botanical theories. My sojourn into the wild, as well as my perusal of that fine tome, Warts and Weeds, has taught me that I do not need to be Galathir's apprentice to study the natural world. So I followed his new apprentices here and I have been trying to help them with their studies. It seems to me they might be cut from the same cloth as my old master, poor fellows. They have been bothering the people here with Galathir's questions when they should be out in the field studying the plants and grasses with their own eyes. All right, so we're gonna help her out here. So we're gonna talk to this fella and um, so, all right. 
So, okay. Uh, he says, Milgamel is a good friend, and I have known her since childhood, but she proved a poor apprentice to my master, Galavir. I think she fancied herself the master and he the apprentice. Can you imagine such folly? Anyway, Brood here and I know to, to show him the respect he deserves, and we have come here to confirm several of his theories about the spread of flowering plants in the Northlands. Milgamel came along as well, and to speak true, I do not think we would have prevented her from doing so. She will not appear. We could have prevented her. She will not appear in our report to Galathir, I can tell you that. But enough of this banter. I spoke to a fellow some time ago, a Perianath like you, about gathering up some yellow cattails for my study, and he never returned. Now I charge you with this task, and I beg that you do not disappoint me as he did. Okay. So... He has sent us out to go gather some of the local flora. And thankfully enough, it's nearby. For example, here's a yellow cattail. All right. And let's see what else we got. So we need to just gather the yellow cattails around the area. Now, I noticed somebody's picking up these purple flowers. That is another part of this quest. So we will be coming back for those. But first, we're going to start off with the yellow cattails. Do, 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 do. Okay, and usually, oh, I should say, I'm kind of running around here like I know where I'm going because I kind of know where I'm going. Uh, but I should kind of point out where we are in case, you know, this is new to you. The new maps are just totally freaking me out. I've got to get used to those. So we're up here in the festival area. Uh, the, the, and the maze is over here and the horse racing. Hang Stacer's Farm is north of us. Um, so we've got uh, all, that's where our, our poor, uh, you know, surrounded fellow is, he's tucked in there. Over here, there's the um, the pie eating contest, if you've ever partaken in that. And over here is the horse back to Breetown. So um, if you ever, I use this sometimes as a shortcut if I'm trying to get north, like if I need to go to Hank Stacers for something, I don't know. Um, I'll take the festival horse from Bree up to here because that cuts off a big chunk and then keep going up. And also some, one time, sometimes the way I get to Trestle Bridge, however, there's now a travel to Trestle Bridge that you can get from the Brotherhood of, no, not the Brotherhood of the Axe, I'm mixing them up. The Axe people are the South, the Brotherhood is the North. Woodworker, wood, 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 wood people's Brotherhood, something like that. Wood, the Woodcutter's Brotherhood. Is, up in the, is, is in Trussell Bridge. And if you get enough of their reputation um, items, the things that you collect, then you can buy a travel to skill for Trussell Bridge now. So that's like super exciting. So anyway, um, so we're looking for the cattails. Cattails are, and do, 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 do. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm running around over here on the side. So they're kind of like around the outskirts of this particular little area. So let me find the next one. See, there's one over there. So we're gonna run over there and grab that. Cool. And then there will be another. So like you notice, we've already collected five out of the eight of them. There's more than eight so, like, in here. And I've even kind of started of like eight. on the north and I'm working my way kind of south. Um, so you end up kind of making your way around partway and then you just <laughs> cut right back. So, yeah, that's all right. Um, all right. So we're going to scoot along here in just a second. And grab another drink. Oh, there's one right next to us. That's convenient. Cool, cool, cool. So, all right. Sorry, and I'm just getting caught up on the chat. So... Let's see. <laughs> Eldoleth settled in with some pizza. That sounds awesome. Uh, I What did I have? We had um, a salad with cherry tomatoes and... Um, oops, don't want the wine. Not ready for wine. We'll do the wine in a minute. Um, oh, I've got all my cattails. That's why. Let's run back to, to, our, to our person. Um, yeah, with chicken and mozzarella balls and a balsamic vinaigrette. They had it at the grocery store, and then I made a version at home that was pretty good. Oh, before we get too far, this is the new mount 
for this season, for the spring festival. So look at that gorgeous thing. Oh, I'm so excited. So I really enjoy putting together. So I'm not much of a fashionista like in this world. Um, although I did wear something nice and jaunty, or at least I tried to for today for spring. Um, but man, in the game, I'm having so much fun with the wardrobe and the dyes and all this stuff. So I've started creating outfits where pretty much the outfit and my steed kind of have a have a look. So you see, we've got, you know, she's kind of got her wintry look going here. But so now I'm going to need to put together an outfit that really goes well with that steed. That's those are some great colors. I love that green and the gold, all the gold going on with that yellow. That's nice. And that dark, dark brown horse. Very pretty horse. Ooh, look at that front bit. Nice. Nice. Okay. I'll stop staring at this woman. She's probably wondering why I'm staring at her. Why is this hobbit looking at me? <laughs> All right, Nethlas. Let's talk. Oh, I was going to look at the cheetah chat here. Um, bum, bum, bum. Yay for spring. I agree, PJ Shamrock. Totally excited, as you can tell. Um, what server am I on? Um, I'm currently playing on Laurelin. Um, so it's a little more role play -y around, which is another reason why I don't want to stare at anybody for too long. It'd be embarrassing. Um, but I, uh, I sometimes I'm over on Landerval with a character who looks very, very similar to this one. Um, okay. And let's see. Okay, so who else we have? A natural study. Let's see what he has to say. He says, ah, the cat tells I requested. You have proven your worth to be far greater than the fellow I first asked for these. I will examine these on behalf of my master, and we will see if he has the right of it. Milgamel thinks that old book of hers, Warts and Weeds, lists the proper uses of cattail, but Galathir has his doubts, and therefore so do I. Okay, so I'm already not impressed with their master, I have to be said. But, all right, we'll keep listening and see what they have to say. He says, but I have become quite parched. Yeah, I get it, right? Uh, will, you be, will you bring our table some of that fine spring wine? I saw a number of the bottles across the grounds over that way, and every worthwhile botanical study requires proper refreshments. So says my master, and so say I. Okay, so we're going to get drunk and tell people what we think, whether we have the, uh, the data for it or not, right? That's, that's what I'm getting out of that, out of this guy. That's the vibe I'm getting from this guy. So we know where the wine is because we've been there before. Oops, excuse me, pardon me. Just run right under your arm. Okay, so over here in this area, so directly south of all those folks, is uh, there's a bunch of uh, tables with a bunch of bottles of the spring wine. And it's convenient because we're going to take these various places. So while we're down here, let's go ahead and knock out this uh, spring wine for the parched party goers. So we're going to go ahead and grab one of these. And I'm going to run this over to the table. So kind of over by, pardon me, um, not exactly where the horses are, but pretty close to it. It's these party goers over here. And oh, looks that other people are doing the same thing. So as soon as you get close, usually it'll pop up. Whoops, what's going on? That's weird. Usually it just drops right off. Oops, I went to the wrong people. Maybe? Oh, maybe I went to the wrong place. No. Okay, now I'm confused. I go straight over, go across. I wonder if something glitched out. Let's try the other table. Because there's three different tables we gotta take places. Take wine two. Maybe because they just got wine, they didn't they weren't ready for any more. I'm gonna check. Excuse me, Mr. Door. So I know these folks are usually wanting some wine. Why does nobody want any wine? Oh, because I'm in the middle of the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I failed to deliver the wine. How unfortunate. Okay, only one person wants wine right now, and it's the, uh, the flower people. All right, buddy, I got your wine. We'll take that over. Okay, fine. You get it first. The other party goers can wait. Excuse me, let me run around behind your horse. Excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me. Okay, here we go. Here you are, my dude. Have some wine. He nods at you in acknowledgement, but not thanks. Mm hmm. It has come to my attention that there are patches of purple anorloth growing nearby. 
Why did I spend my time thinking about yellow cattails when I could be studying a much more interesting and important bloom? Why Galathair would be most disappointed in me, and I might join Milgamel as another in the growing line of spurned apprentices. Why am I not surprised this guy has lost apprentices? Quickly, my useful assistant, gather up purple Anerloth and bring them to me with utmost haste. I will tell you the history of this most important flower upon your return. Yeah, um, he is well written to annoy. I agree. <laughs> but we're going to go pick up some purple flowers. There we go. Get this quest thing out of my face. And they are also scattered around the outside as we ran across them before. Um, so, gathering purple flowers. Oh, I was going to hover over it so you can see what it says because it's pretty. Uh, the purple blossoms of this flower surround a bright center reminiscent of the sun. Oh, nice. I really like it when the developers take the extra time to kind of go in and add some little details and stuff. Because, I mean, I, I will be, I can tell you, I will be here at the festival grounds with this character and many others every day for the next, uh, I forgot how long it goes, uh, but until, for as long as the festival goes, basically. So I appreciate when a lot of those little details, you know, when they put that in there, because I, I eventually will notice them, even if I don't see them on the first day or five days. <laughs> By day 20, I'm like, oh, look at that. <laughs> All right, we could do the wine, but we're going to just try to stay on target here. Try to stay, stay on target. All right. Yes, all the revelers look alike. <laughs> okay, so we have gathered up purple flowers for Mr. Annoying. But just as a, I don't know, somewhat of a spoiler, the story does resolve nicely. So I don't mind. Oh, I love all the little, looks like the hobbits can't hold their ale. Where, are they asleep under the table? I don't see anybody at this table. There are hobbits asleep under some tables, though, which is great. Yeah, we hobbits, we like to party. We enjoy our food and our drink. All right, a natural study. Yes, these fl these flowers are clearly Anerloth, and the samples are in fine condition. <clears throat> it makes a great sense, deal of sense that they should grow here in the Northlands. You see, these purple flowers with the yellow centers are the descendants of a very special type of flower that the men of the West brought to these shores long ago. That bloom was called Anerlose. We're going to go with that. And it was planted wherever they came to settle. These Anerloth are held to be the descendant of those legendary flowers which died out sometime in the intervening years. My master Galathir has written extensively about the Anerlose of long ago and the Anerloth of today. And he is widely considered the foremost expert on both, which is a bit unfortunate. Ah, but I am parched once again. We are in need of more spring wine assistance. Fetch us some now and I will share with you. No, not the wine. I will share with you more tales of the legendary Anarlose. So, we're going to keep whining and dining these folks. Oh, what do you want? What does this guy have to say? We are in need of wine! He doesn't say much, but straight to the point. Now, if it was a quieter day, I would possibly get on my horse and run over there. But, okay, so we're going to surreptitiously look at this person. I'm just looking at these flowers over here, don't mind me. This is some of the new festival stuff as well. It is um, the boots and the jacket, and I think there's a hat of the jaunty fellow or uh, something like that. It's, it's Tom Bombadil. So basically, you can dress yourself up like Tom Bombadil. <laughs> so good. I was taking a quick look at some of the stuff earlier. Okay, so let's grab these guys another bottle of this lovely spring wine. Excellent. We're carrying wine. We're carrying the wine. Here, we'll go up these stairs. It's fun. Why not? Eee. All right. Jump over a barrel. Jump over the barrel. Ha -ha. All right. Well, you know, I'm a hobbit. I'm experienced in these things. We'll run by and smell the pretty flowers. Pretty flowers. And there we go. You have your wine again. So Brood here catches her eye and calls you over. The assistant who brings the wine is the most popular of them all. Well, you should get up and do it then. 
That is not one of Galather's expressions, but it is one of mine. So it is with an abundance of good feeling that I count you as a friend. Never mind the five glasses of wine you've already had to, right? Might you do something for me, my new friend? There's an elf across the way who seems to have taken an interest in our discussions. He's right over there. I assume this is the kind of guy who points at people. And he has been staring at us for some time now. I do not like it. Go and see what he wants. All right, we'll go do that. So, I may have spied said elf previously. He's, you know, he's just holding up this pillar here. No, he's just minding his own business. No big deal. He says, oh, I apologize if I have caused the visiting herbalist some discomfort, but I must confess that it was not entirely without reason. I find their demeanor unpleasant and their behavior discourteous, but I am most offended by this single point. The herb master they serve knows nothing about the Anerlos, Anerlos bloom and has spread much about it that is simply untrue. All right, so we're gonna finish here. So now if you were, say, busy and you had to run um, and you weren't gonna have time to continue the storyline right now, this is a great stopping point because then you can pick this back up and, and keep running through it. We're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and keep going because um, we have time. We're gonna do it. Oh, just right, over in the chat. Hi, how are you doing? Good to see you. Excellent, yes, the pint, the ale comes in pint. The ale comes in pint. All right, I can't do his accent quite properly. My bad, sorry. All right, the blooms of Anerlos. So this elf, uh, Herndel, that we're talking to, says, I would not normally involve myself with such matters, but my brother Ed, Ed, Ed Lothon travels to Mithland, there to depart Middle-earth for the Undying Lands. We said our farewells just yesterday, and I tarried here at the festival grounds, seeking a balm for my unsettled thoughts. I could not make the decision for him, but neither am I ready to sail into the West, and the conflict wars within me. Ed Lothon and I were given to traveling throughout Middle-earth, and together we found great joy in the beauty of far-off places. See, I, I can relate to that. So, we rested in Rivendell and called it home, but never for long. We were always off again on our journeys before the sun had set a dozen times, and we wandered the wilds and came to villages unfamiliar and strange. This was our practice for almost the, an age of the world. But Edlathon grew sorrowful at the changes he saw, the places that were damaged by the ravages of war, the losses inflicted by Sauron. In time, we did not journey as often, and we spent longer in Rivendell than we did away. This has been the last of our travels. That's sad, right? So, hold on. He says, <clears throat> my brother departs, but the memory of my wanderings with him remain. And that is how I know your herbalist friends are mistaken. The purple Anerlof of today bear little resemblance to the Anerlosa of legend. If you tell them this, I will describe what I know of the Anerlosa to them and to you if you wish. Absolutely. So we're going to go back and say, Neener, Neener, you're wrong. Maybe we'll be nicer than that. I do not know what this elf thinks he knows, but I have never heard his name before. How many tomes of herb lore has he studied? Not only that, how many has he written? My master Galathir has written innumerable such tomes and is a noted expert on countless subjects related to the many breeds and uses of every plant that grows upon this middle earth. Bet he doesn't know pipeweed or good tea. All in Minas Tirith know of his expansive knowledge, and none would dare doubt its breadth or its accuracy. I will hear out this elf, but only in order to reveal him for the charlatan he is, and you can tell him so. All right. I think you will be wrong, but here we go. All right, listen well, and I will tell both these herbalists and you what I know of the legendary Anerlose. So this is, this is gonna take us into a, an instance. And it's hilarious because I've come into this with really low level characters. And because we're in Avendim, uh, sometimes it'll come up with the thing of like, we're saying, this is a really dangerous area. Don't stray from the path. <laughs> um, thankfully, I've been doing a lot of festivals with Adamantia, so she's already level 67. Uh, yeah, we've hardly left the Shire, but we're 67. Okay, so the, here's those three herbalists that we've been talking to. And here's the elf. Heron, Her, Herondel, who wants to talk to us. Okay, here we go. So 
He says, many are the varieties of flower that bloom in the undying lands beyond the reach of mortals, never to be seen by man or dwarf or hobbit. Elves know of them by song or story, if not by sight, and that knowledge brings them joy or sorrow in turns. But some flowers came to grow in distant soil. The Anerlose was one of them, and it grew in profusion in Numenor across the sea. Tall it was, like the men of that land, and as it grew, it faced the rising of the sun in the east and was crowned with the light of morning. So now he's going to tell us some more, that they were held to be an emblem of the house of Elros. And he's going to point out the flowers over here. And you may notice these look somewhat familiar. So the seeds were sent to be planted wherever men of the West came to settle. <laughs> oh, sorry, these people are talking. But that means that it should bloom in many places. And uh, does it not? Yeah, she's, she's clever. She says, every student of history knows the tale of en Elendil and his flight from Numenor and that he brought plants and seedlings of high birth and low with him to Middle-earth. But if he ordered such flowers as the Anarlosa to be planted wherever his people settled, they should still grow in abundance. Uh, this is why my former master believed the uh, Anarloth to be the true descendant. And on this, I cannot say I disagree. How came Herondal to know the flower story? How, did this elf, how does this elf know this story, right? Yeah, and the other guy, bah, he, he's not... He doesn't, he's not the most eloquent of people. So, uh, he says, if these tall flowers were truly planted by the men of the West throughout Middle Earth, where are they now? Anderloth grows in many places and I have not seen these flowers you describe in Gondor. Neither have I seen them throughout Avilion. If you are not a liar, perhaps you're a fool, but I should wish to be neither. Well, he says, how do you claim to come by this knowledge? Not by study, I warrant. He says, no, you're right. I have not come by this knowledge through study or at least not through the study of old books or her master's teachings. My brother and I walked through the hills and valleys of Middle Earth long ago. So he's going to, yeah, here's a nice little recollection of the two of them walking together. He says, we took great joy in our wanderings and every new sight filled our hearts. So there's the brother, there's him. Nothing cheered us so much as the Anarlose that, we, that lined the roads as we walked. They grew in the gardens of Minas Anor, far to the south. And now you can see the, the flowers have bloomed and blossomed in this instance. So they grew too in the courts along the paths of Anuminas, city of the kings, which is not far from where we are. But she says, what happened to them? He says, they died. Sad. It began when Anarion was slain in Mordor. It continued during the long decline of the Northern Kingdom. So it's like the flowers are tied, you know, to the magic that brought them there. And on one sad day, there were none left. My brother and I did not journey together much after that. We just grew apart. I do appreciate how they use a lot of the emotes that uh, we have access to when they're doing these things. Like you notice when the brother was very sad, he was doing the cry emote. And then when he disappeared and the brother was standing there, he just sigh. All right, so he says, that is the tale. Now, you must understand why I feel so strongly that the Anarlossi be remembered as they were and not as a distant herb master pretends them to be. So we'll go ahead and finish that instance. We have completed this. So, I'm not saying I believe this elf, Adamantia, but he has given me some food for thought. Well, that's good. I'm glad you sort of heard what he had to say. So, let's see. Eldeleth says, it looks like Fibro Jedi has got some of the gorgeous dresses up. So, you're going to have to go get some. Yeah, I did take a quick look, like I said earlier, and Fibro Jedi, I know, has been working so hard behind the scenes trying to get things up. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, Fibro Jedi has a, um, a website, fibrojedi.me.co.uk, I believe it is. Um, I bet one of the mods can pop that up. Oh, she already did. Move out, put it up there for us. Um, yes, fibrojedi.me.co.uk. UK slash Lotro slash Spring Festival. There it is again. Um, and he always has these great guides 
to what's going on, where do you find people, and then he's really working on having a, um, a guide with all of the different cosmetics for all the different festivals. So good. Um, and then, yes, uh, Before and Forest says, I've been waiting for the Spring Festival since Bombadil server last summer. <laughs> because during this festival, you can get the Tome of the Silly Goose. Um, I, yeah, we, uh, we run around together and uh, we picked up the Dol Amroth uh, swans. But yes, they're, not, they're just not quite the same. So I, I named my swan knight, like dark, you know. So now I have a, a swan knight. Get it? And uh, his swan is named Goose. So we, we enjoy doing silly things like that. Yeah. So, okay, so back to our elf. He says, uh, Edlothon and I did not travel as often once the Anerlose died out. It was only one sign of the wounds that Sauron had inflicted upon Middle-earth, but it affected we two more personally than many others. I wonder if the Anerlose grow still in the Undying Lands. Perhaps when I come there at last, I'll find my brother smiling among them, eager to chastise me for delaying so long to see them. It is a happy thought, even if that is all. So, a nearby hobbit, though, speak, coughs politely, motioning for you to speak with her. Ahem. Yes. How are you? Are you enjoying the festival, my friend hobbit? She says, oh, well, I beg your pardon, and I hope you'll excuse me, but I could not help but overhear the telling of your friend's story, and I'm not very good with names, so I do not quite know what flower he was talking about, but it seems to me it bears some resemblance to the humble sunflower. They grow in the Shire, you know. Yeah, now that you mention it, that sounds familiar. So, okay. Well, let's go tell our new elf friend. Maybe he'll be uh, curious to hear this. That hobbit believes that some strain of Anerlossi still grows within the bounds of her land. Can it be true? So, and we finish that. So again, if you needed to step away from the quest at some point, that's another good stopping point because you can come and pick this up. The reason I mentioned that is because the next part of this now, oh, hang on, before I do that, so I don't know if you noticed, but it popped up and it said that we've participated in two spring festival activities already. So that's another nice thing about doing this, uh, this story that happens is it does actually help us uh, with our 10 festival quests of the day. So again, a reminder to always pick up your daily wrapper before you start doing that. Um, yes, someone, people are watching the chat, I'm sorry, you were asking about the best MMO, Lord of the Rings. I agree. I enjoy it quite a lot. <laughs> uh, all right. So he says, so now the quest uh, is called to depart in springtime. He says, I can hardly believe it, Adamantia. Uh, can it be true that the blooms of the Analosa have come to be preserved within the bounds of the Shire? I do not want my brother Ed, Ed Lothan to depart from Middle Earth without knowing if this be so. The thought that he could leave without knowing fills me with regret, and my remaining years will be a sorrow to think he sailed away without believing every tra uh, sailed away believing every trace of the Anarlosa had vanished. Um, so you have the look of a determined hobbit, Adamantia. I do. I have that determined look. Can I ask you to hurry after my brother's company and to bring him word of these sunflowers? I do not ask you to change his mind, merely to let him know that the flowers we loved in our younger days did not disappear as we believed, but st can still be found in the world today. That will be enough for me and for Ed Lothon, my brother. His party of elves plan to take the customary route of our people through the country of the Green Hills. Go to the Shire and look for them in the wooded hills above the road. And hurry, I said farewell to my brother not far from here, but that was yesterday and he will have covered much ground since then. So our quest is going to be to catch up with him in the Green Hill country of the Shire before his elf company departs. So we have to catch him before they leave, which we now have a timer going of 29 minutes and 56 seconds. So there are many ways to get to the Shire, as I'm certain you all know. However, I, as a hobbit, am somewhat familiar with how to get back to Mickle Delving. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> so yes, we are live right now, Malcolm. If you have any questions, uh, definitely feel free to put that in the chat. I'm able to uh, keep track of that now. So um, yeah, just let me know if you or if anybody else who's watching the stream has any questions, let me know. Now here's a nice little touch. 
And I, I keep forgetting to check if these are through, uh, if these are here all year round. I think they are, but look, we have some right here. All right, so we need to go find those elves off in Green Hill Country. So if you've spent some time in the Shire, you might recall that it's down here in the Woodhall area. Oops, hang on, I'm running right through the, right through this market stalls. Never mind the potatoes, my potatoes, my cabbages. So um, it's also the the route that um, Frodo and the other hobbits took to get out of the Shire. I was watching Professor Corey, who streams on Fridays um, here on the Lotro stream, and uh, he was talking one day about you know the path that the um, the hobbits took, and so he was showing us in the game basically that path, and that's been uh, really fun to to be able to watch that. So, um, how long have I been playing Lotro? Um, I started in January two years ago. So two, two and a smidge. So not as long as Malcolm with this 13 years ago. That's pretty exciting. I bet you've got a lot of really cool stuff in your inventory. <laughs> so yes, I have not been playing as long as some folks. So, so in the scope, it's really interesting because, you know, with a lot of MMOs, people come and go. Uh, with Locho, there are a lot of people that, that are here that have been playing for a long time. And so even with my two years, I still feel kind of like a newcomer and that's kind of fun. Um, but yet at the same time, I mean, you kind of spend time doing things, right? So I've kind of gotten to be somewhat knowledgeable about festivals and social things. That, that's my niche. That's my, that's my jam. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, Malcolm said they got the uh, lifetime membership from turbine. Um, yeah, so many people are like, why? Well, could you guys offer that again? And they're like, no, we're not gonna offer that again. <laughs> that was a long time ago. But it is thanks to those people who did that so long ago that this game got a good foothold and is still here today. So that's pretty exciting. All right, like the crazy hobbit I am, I just ran across the country instead of taking the roads because that's how I roll. That's right. Um, so I know, okay, so if you come through here, uh, I believe this is that area with the, the brigands and the, that have taken over. So funny thing, I don't necessarily connect dots A to B all the time. If you start as a hobbit, your intro takes you through here. This is where you find all those spiders and that um, it's old, old Odo's leaf farm. And that's where the, the spiders have, have t kind of taken over and you've got the bounder who's taking you through and all those. I just totally missed out on that. No, I don't want that. I'm coming through here because I'm a scholar and there's usually scholar stuff nearby. Yeah. When I'm first starting, a, when I first started one of these characters and she's a scholar and she was all by herself on the server and trying to collect scholar materials. Oh, that's painful. So I, I came in here and stood there and collected over and over again one day. <laughs> All right, but we have elves to see. They're waiting on us. We need to get out there. People to see, things to do. Elves to talk to. I've met elves before, you know. Every so often I go adventuring too. Don't tell anybody. But I am a bit of an adventurous hobbit. Whoa, where'd that water come from? Why don't we take the bridge? I'll bet you it's a well bridge. Uh -huh. All right. I know these elves are over here somewhere. I've seen them. I've seen evidence of elves in the trees. They're in here somewhere. I know because my quest arrow tells me so. <laughs> Aha! So, yes, this is the abandoned elf camp. So that's cute. It says the elf camp is not abandoned for now. So normally when you come in here, you'll find like maybe one elf standing around and he's like, hey, how's it going? Um, but in Elvish, of course. But right now this is uh, representing the elves that are planning to go off into the west. So let's see, do we have some names? Ah, uh, yes, we have Elf of Rivendell. Elf of Rivendell. <laughs> elf of Rivendell. So they're all from Rivendell. All right, let's go and talk to the brother here. Megavon and friend. 
What brings you to us with such haste? Uh, stay a moment and rest, for we will soon move on. But before a time, I would welcome the conversation. So you introduce yourself and you convey his brother's message. My brother thinks a hobbit has seen a bloom of the legendary Anerlossa. I find that most difficult to believe. These flowers begin to die, began to die at the uh, end of the Second Age, and as Arnor declined, so too did this flower. They have not been seen for hundreds of years. Your hobbit friend is mistaken, and my brother is misguided by hope. Now we made it in time. Hooray! So our timer is good. And uh, we completed to, uh, to depart in springtime. Um, let's see. What do we got over here? Yes, those offers never happen again. Um, hi, Lena. Oh, Lena Will is on. She's a hobbit that we know. She's a cool hobbit. Um, let's see. Malcolm is having some troubles, it sounds like. Sounds like you guys are talking about that. Awesome. And uh, all right. So um, we're going to go ahead and continue on. So his next thing is the promise of sunflowers. And remember, that's the hobbit name for these flowers, right? He says, you are certain you understood what this hobbit had to say. For love of my brother, I will humor you in this, even if it seems fanciful beyond all reason. There is a hobbit village just beneath us, and I understand it is called Woodhall by those who live there. Go to this village, speak with the hobbits, and learn if they possess such flowers as you describe. My mind is set, and springtime is the season of my departure. But I have not such haste that I cannot spare a moment to answer this one question of my brother. The journeys we shared in our youth remain dear to me, as does he. Go to Woodhall and put the matter to rest. I cannot delay very long, but I will give you some moments to this exercise. It has left my thoughts astir. All right, so let's go check it out. The Promise of Sunflowers. So Woodhall is nearby. And indeed it is. And you'll notice there's a bunch of little quest rings nearby. So like, if you are a respectable person, you would go and take the road and find your way down into Woodhall. So we'll pretend that we're gonna do that and land on some roofs. <laughs> Cause I like jumping on roofs. <laughs> so, all right, if we go over here, uh, let's see, we're asking around. This hobbit's been busy today, I guess. Will you let me sit here in peace? I know only that I find flowers quite pretty to look at, but if you seek a deeper understanding than that, I have nothing to offer you. What does she know? Over here. This mysterious flower does sound like a sunflower to me. Not the purple sort with the bright yellow center, but the other variety. Uh, Marjoram is always painting that second kind, and if uh, you want to know about them, you should talk to her. She lives here in Woodhall. All right, we'll go talk to her in a minute. Let's go see what this townsperson says. You should talk to Marjoram. I'm getting a theme here. She was always painting flowers and plants and animals, and she may have seen this elf flower you're seeking. She lives right here in Woodhall. So convenient. All right. Well, golly, maybe we should go talk to Marjoram in Woodhall. She lives right here, I've been told. All right, Marjoram Woolgatherer says, you're looking for sunflowers? Why, I finished painting another one of them, not yesterday. I leaned it against the wall right over here to dry. Inspect it and tell me what you think. All right. Look at that cute little hobbit painting. Cute little hobbit painting. We have examined the painting. It does bear a resemblance to the Anerlossa described by the elf oh, back in Bree. The brother here says, I do not know what to say, Anamantia. If I did not know any better, I would say the artist painted this not from memory, but from life. This depicts one of the Anerlossa, just as I remember. How can this be? Did one of my people paint this picture? How came it to be in this village of hobbits? They are, not, they are longer lived than men, but not so long that any of them could have seen the Anerlossa and put paint to paper with such accuracy. The last of that breed died out long ago, and only one of my people could have painted this. <laughs> she laughs, and then she curtsies cheerily. I always heard elves were frightening and strange, but your friend here seems rather amusing instead. I assure you, no elf painted this picture, but I will take that as a compliment of my artistry. Yes, I am the painter, and indeed, I have painted a number of the plants and animals I have seen in the woods and fields throughout the Shire. I do not know the word he'd use to describe this flower, as I have never heard it before. No doubt it is an elvish word of some meaning and great significance. But we hobbits like to give things names that tell you everything you need to know. This painting is of a sunflower, of course. 
There are many of them growing around the border of the farm field uh, north of Woodall, if you'd like to see them for yourself. And tell your elf friend that I appreciate his kind words about my painting. Okay, so she says, hey, there's some growing nearby. And he says, what, a field bordered by such flowers as that depicted by this painting? Lead the way, even if I scarce believe the words of this hobbit. Dun, dun, dun. So now on our quest map, I've noticed this before, the quest ring is back here where he was. We don't want to go there, we want to go to this one. So if you're doing this quest, just that's a little uh, FYI to keep an eye on that. Make sure you're not sending yourself to the wrong place. All right, if you ask me, Woodhall is the finest town in the Shire. I mean, it's nice. I don't know if I'd call it the finest town in the Shire. I mean, like, I don't even see a pub, man. And, I mean, where's your inn? Where, where are we gonna get a pint? I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to disagree with you on that one, my friend Hobbit. All right, so we're gonna leave Woodhall though, and we're gonna head north and not towards where the arrow is uh, pointing us to, but to now where this arrow is pointing us to. And I am just a wreck of a hobbit here, aren't I? Just running right through these fields. But that's okay, because I am looking for that guy right there. Hi! Sunflowers line the field, and he stares at them with wonder in his eyes. Aww. What have we got? Well, he's just, you know, beside himself, really, isn't he? How can I put this into words, Adamantia? My heart leaps at the sight. I feel as if I have stepped back in time, back to a day, not when the Anarlossa struggled and failed, but to a day when they flourished. Herondel and I walked together along, among these flowers in kingdoms north and south, and our eyes lighted on the horizon, and our minds danced upon the future it promised. I am brought back to these happy days, and the sorrows that followed in the wake of Saruman and his wars are forgotten to me. The promise of the sunflowers was as bright as their petals, and so many journeys lay still ahead for us. He says, following the death of Anarion and the decline of Arnor, the Anarlos died out in the wider world, and yes, somehow a seedling must have come to this land. I can see it in my mind's eye, Anamantia, born aloft in the springtime, carried on the breeze until it came to rest within this sheltered land. And, you know, hobbits have some of the best uh, land out there. So, the, that seed took root, and from it, the line prospered, hidden from outside eyes. The Anarlos survived. Ed, uh, Ed, Ed Lothon gazes at the sunflowers in silence. I was prepared to depart. My heart wept to leave my brother, but I knew I would see him again when he too sailed from these shores. But the sight of these flowers has restored in me a sensation I have not felt since our travels together so long ago. How many other wonders might remain in Middle-earth? The wanderlust stirs in me again. I believed I could remain no longer, but now I think my brother and I might find joy in another journey within the bounds of Middle-earth and then depart for the Unlying Dying Lands together, as I once thought we would. Can I ask you to convey this message to Harrendel for me? I will spend some time here in contemplation, and I will join him soon. You have my thanks, Adamantia, for reminding me of what I once held dear. And not only that, I am grateful for one more thing. You have given back to me the hope of the unexpected, the unlooked-for wonders that might still remain around the next bend or behind the next tree. You have given back to me the promise of sunflowers, and that is something I have missed. It's missed. Tearing up there a little bit, right? All right, so they want us to go back and talk to the brother at the festival grounds. So we're gonna go do that in just a moment. But yes, I think it is time for a sip of tea and to see if there's any other chit chat. Hello to the Viking Fortress. That is a very popular elf, I agree. Yeah, I've been standing here for not long and already Half a dozen people want to come talk to this guy. He must be well known in these parts. Or his traveling companions are well known. <laughs> He's become well known. Um, I'm gonna pop up to the party tree. Let me see if I remember how to get there from back here. I don't spend a lot of time down this way. I spend a lot of time in Bywater and Mickle Delving <laughs> and the party tree, but I haven't come this way as much as I used to. So it's really kind of funny that now I'm trying to look around. I'm like, I don't know what's around here anymore. 
All right. So, no, there was the reason I want to go to the party tree is there's, oh, I don't want to go that way. Um, there's a couple of things happening over there. So, we're going to check in and see what's the buzz. So, there are definitely things happening throughout Middle Earth, especially throughout the um, Eriador parts of Middle Earth. Like, we've got um, in the Shire, we've got a few things at the hop, at the party tree and up at the Bull Roarers um, statue. Uh, there's some things happening up there. A couple, a couple things. Um, the real hub is is still um, the festival grounds in, in Breeland. But we're gonna run through by water. Hi, Green Dragon. Hi, Barmy. I'll be back on Friday. I'll be back tomorrow. I uh, pop in there, you know, for a nice glass of wine every Friday night. Hang out with some friends. Listen to music dance, sing songs, do riddles. It's a wonderful hoppity evening. So now I must point out my main nemesis of Middle Earth has been and will probably continue to be the lamppost. I don't know what it is, but I have this terrible habit of running into those things and getting stuck on them. So if you stick around, not necessarily today, but someday, I know we will encounter the lamppost again. It's usually along here when I'm trying to run back and forth during like the harvest festival. <laughs> Let's see, where was I going? Oh yeah, I'm going to the party tree. To the party tree! To the party tree. Yeah, that lamppost or that one. I don't know. I got magnets on them or reach out, grab you. I don't know what's their deal, but man, they're good. Okay, so here we are at the party tree. If you have not learned all of the dances yet, uh, there are four places that you can go and learn dances. So let me show you in your collections panel, which is control C or, or sorry, control shift, shift C, or you can toggle it here with the little stable masters thing on your mini radar. Okay, so you've got your pets, You've got your mounts, you've got emotes, and then you've got your stable masters that you've acquired through Middle Earth. So uh, if I look at emotes and I look at dance, it, oh, okay. Man, got a little quiet, got slowed down for a second there. Okay, um, it shows me all the dances that I have, whether I have earned them, which would be the yellow ones, or whether they came, um, those are auto generated, the green ones, they come with you as a character. So the only one I don't have now at this point is Dance Man, which uh, requires some reputation with the Al Greg, the men of Enidvaith. So that one I'm a little ways from getting, but the rest of them I have. So, um, so if you needed to learn, for example, Dance Hobbit or Dance Hobbit 2, um, and then also you can learn Dwarf and Dwarf 2, Elf, there's Elf 2, and then there's Man and Man 2. So you'll see that there's kind of a, a, a you know, a pattern there. So Ogre Brockhouse here, he is the dance leader for um, teaching you how to do Hobbit dances. Hey, so you would click on him, um, you would you would accept his, re his uh, thing here, and then Every 20 minutes, I believe it is, it, it triggers. So I don't know if he's going to do this in two minutes or in seven minutes. So we'll hang out here in the area for a minute so I can show you how this works. Um, but basically, I'll just go ahead and tell you that um, if we were to stay here and do the dance with him, you have to have him selected. So notice how I've got him selected and I can see his little ring here. Like, you know, if I were to select her, well, she's not selectable, but um, sorry, it seems like I'm getting a touch of lag here. Um, let's see, like if I were to select Baldo Mudfoot, you'll notice I've got Baldo up there now. I don't have Ogre. So you gotta make sure you have Ogre or whoever the dance leader is selected. And then on the side where your quest is, there will be a, that little square that comes up that shows you the emote that you need to do. So while you're clicked on him, the emote will pop up of like dance three. And so you click on it and you'll do dance three. And then he'll be like, cool, now let me show you dance one. And the little icon for dance one will come and you click that and so you do dance one. So that's how you do the dances. So I know um, that was a little um, hard for me to figure out at first. Like I failed it a couple times until I figured out the keys to that. So just wanted to point that out for those of you who are still have some dances to go and learn. 
All right, let's check in with Baldo Mudfoot, though. What you got going on? Would you like to make your way to a festival event? I am here to help. Okay. The Garden of Pests. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. He says, hello, my friend. Did you just arrive? <laughs> I'm ready to send you off again, for there are many celebrations all over Middle Earth today. I am particularly interested in the new garden at Doolin. From what I understand, the elves there are having a bit of a problem getting their crops off the ground. If they had uh, a hobbit gardener tending to their land, I'm sure there would be no problems of this sort. Just the same. I, th uh, I should like to see it. If you find yourself there at all, you should look for Main Gamiel. So this is uh, taking us, or telling us about an area where the shrew stomping event happens. And we will check that out either this week or next week. Possibly next week. So, okay. So he also has to the horse races, and this is common. And most of the festivals, you've got, you know, the two horse races, the horse racing, horse fields of Bree, and then the uh, horse delving fields over here in the Shire. Um, and you can earn festival tokens through that. Uh, so he's saying, you know, he's not up for the horse racing, um, but you should go check it out. So we'll go ahead and grab that. I should have room in my quest. And then where the rare flowers bloom, Hello there. Might I speak this with is, which one is this? He says, ah, spring, the scent of flowers is in the air. Why, they're at their most bountiful now out of all the weeks of the year and are blooming all throughout Ered Luin, the Shire, and Bree. Avery, Crabtree, and Bree Town, oh, yeah, 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 was looking for someone to help him out of a pickle, and I think you look just the sort. Go speak to him if you have the time, and you'll find him in the Market Square in Bree. Oh, I just noticed that we failed the dances because it started and I didn't do it. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess I should have been paying attention. Sorry, Ogre. I'm sure your dancing is lovely. Okay. So, well, oh, but yeah, you can see how he's te saying, join me now, I'm doing the second dance. Dance three is the step here. So what I tried to do is I'd type in, you know, slash, dance three, enter, and I'd try to do it real fast, and then be like, okay, good, rest. Okay, dance one is, and I'd slash, dance one, and um, sometimes I wasn't fast enough, or I'd, you know, trip over my fingers or whatever. So you just use the little button on the side and that's the best way to do that. Uh, okay, so, oh, what do you want? Hello. I did not realize there was somebody else here to talk to. Sorrel North Took. I'll bet she's from the North. I'll bet she's a Took. The celebration at the Greenfields. Oh yes. Welcome to Hobbiton. If you have come here for the Feast of the Greenfields, you have gotten off at the wrong stop. <laughs> yeah, get back on your pony and get moving. You are looking for Brocken Borings, my friend. It's up the road beyond Overhill. I expect to be heading there myself before the day is out to toast the mighty bull roarer. I hope to see you there. It is always a good time to be had. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the emote button. Yeah, people in the chat are also talking about the emote button for the dances. I am so glad that emote button is there. Hello there. I have uh, I been a successful dancer many times because of it. Okay, and then a hobbit among the hedges. Uh, hi, you there, young hobbit. Why, I am a young hobbit. How did you know? Have you seen the hedge maze yet? Half the attendants of the Feast of the Greenfields seem to have gone off to the maze in Bree. If you find yourself there this spring, you must talk to my dear sister Buttercup, who went on a great journey to see the hedges. She has always been most fond of foliage. It sounds like there's a great deal of fun to be had on the horse fields this year. I know you'll find yourself there before the festival is done with. You must give my regards to Buttercup while she is there. Okay. We'll do that. I think, I don't know if that gives us much. It's definitely one of those vector quests. And yeah, I don't know that it, it might give us experience. Doesn't look like it gives us any coins or any of the um, leaves, but that's okay. That's okay. So Becca Burdock over here is a, um, she's our token exchange lady. It says right there, token exchange. So throughout the year, there'll be somebody who's like, you know, hey, I need to exchange my tokens, or is that token exchange person around, or any of that. And um, you'll always find her here by the party tree. So, and what this means is you can give her uh, however many tokens it takes of that type, and you get a box. And you open that box and you choose one of these lines. So maybe you'll want to pick out in, you know, you'll get 12 Farmer's Fair tokens, or you'll choose three Midsummer tokens, or something like that. Now, you'll notice that the, um, the Diggy Diggy Hole um, tr treasure event is not listed here. 
you can't get any of those with this one. Um, and you're welcome for that earworm for those of you who have heard that song. So, that. but yeah, you can barter. And so like I could turn in 20 of the fall festival tokens to get one of those boxes or, you know, 25 of the um, farmer's fair tokens that I have. You can see I've been doing some, some stuff. Also, if I wanted to get some essence reclamation scrolls, she can take care of that. So she'll take three of my scraps and turn it into a scroll. Um, so I've just kind of left them because they go in my wallet. And so they're not in my way. <laughs> so I just let that be, whereas the scrolls wouldn't be in my wallet. And so that's an inventory item and I don't need them yet. So I just let them be in because I can come back to her anytime. Okay, so what else have we got? We've got over on the south side here, we've got our in-league fellow and we've got our ale association fellow. Now I, I am a proud member of the in-league. Um, so that is a whole other thing. And um, we can definitely talk about that, but we'll do that another time. Uh, we've got our rewards okay. vendor. Ah, cool. So, um, dude bug in the other area who's like super surrounded. So we're going to look at what we've got here. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be under fresh rewards. And yes. So check this out. So the jacket of a merry fellow, your Tom Bombadil jacket, you've got the hat of a merry fellow and the boots of a merry fellow. It just is. <laughs> Oh my god, it just makes me laugh. It's so cute. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's reset that. Um, it's so good. So, and then here's some of the other ones. We've got the short sleeved dress of the spring maid. Well, that's cute. It'd be cuter if I wasn't wearing gloves, huh? Um, let's check out the long sleeved dress. Oh, that's nice too. Oh, little sunflowers on the side. We've got the sleeveless dress of the spring maid. Now I know a lot of people like those. It's not really my style, so I don't tend to get that, but I do, man, I might get the long sleeve. Oh, that short sleeve one is just too adorable. I wonder how well it dyes. I love to see like different dyes on things. Okay, that doesn't make much difference. Let's see, what's rust? Okay, so it looks like it's dyeing the the chest part and the, um, and the, the shoulders. Um, let's go with a burgundy. Oh, and all the way across. Okay, and so then this tapered part here. But it doesn't change the bottom trim or the top trim around the neck. So that stays yellow or a gold. So you'd probably want to go with something. I mean, this this burgundy looks pretty good with that, actually. Um, let's try orange. I live in the Netherlands, so everything, I do everything in orange at some point. Um, turquoise. Ooh. I wish the bottom would go turquoise too, but this, this is cute though. It's a cute color. I know, I know. I'm just burning time here. Erdogan blue. There you go. There's some Druid's fire for you. I think that's her favorite color, I believe. And let's see. How about a Shire plum? Ooh, that's interesting. Or Imladur's fallen leaf. See, that just kind of blends in. I've been trying to get better about picking colors. Oh, that looks, well, I think that might be the color of the trim. I've been trying to pick colors when I dye things to make them of a, like, like a contrasting color or something that makes it not so obvious, you know, that looks different from the original. So anyway, um, there's the steed. We need to get some, some of these leaves so I can buy the steed. And then there's some really cute furniture items. Uh, we've got uh, Gammer's cozy hobbit bed, Gammer's coffee table, <laughs> Gammer's tall trinket stand. Uh, it looks so good. It looks so good. That's true. It depends on what part of the gear you dye. Um, that is a good point. I should try and see if there's anything else I could dye on that. So do, there we go. Um, let's see. So that was the chest color I was doing. Now yeah, the gloves, there's no gloves. Head is my head. Back, back is going to be the cape. Shoulders, I'm not wearing shoulders. So no, it's going to be pretty much that. Like it doesn't, there's no leg. I don't think you can, yeah, it doesn't have legs. <laughs> There's no legs on that. Oh, well, that's okay though. That's cute. Oh my gosh, so many good decorations and um, outfits and oh, so excited. Okay, um, Eladeleth, my favorite way to get cosmetics, run the beer quests for both factions on a hunter <laughs> and pass the cosmetics using the shared wardrobe and shared storage. Yes, I am a huge fan of the shared wardrobe. Um, oh my gosh, I use this all the time and I've gone through. Now, I started playing on Laurelin, which is where I'm at here. 
in, it was after Bull Roar, sorry, not Bull Roar, um, Bombadil. There was the Bombadil server last spring, last summer, and it ran for like a month in a smidge, and it was like a, a competition server. And so when that was over, I transferred one of my characters from there over to here, and then, um, and that's a different character that I have on here. And then Adamantia, I started her as well because um, I was just feeling much more hobbity, and it's been the right choice. So the the wardrobe I have is not stocked full because I've only been on this server since you know collecting since the fall. <laughs> but one of my favorite items is this Ascot scarf, and it comes in so many like it dyes up so well in so many good colors. So that's like the basic, the default color. I think I've, well, I've only dyed it two colors on this server. I dyed it like four colors on another server. Anyway, we are getting distracted here, aren't we? Uh, oh, just so you know that this guy's here too. So if you have not joined the in league and you want to, this is the guy you come and talk to. And I was thinking we might do that with Rosenbloom. Might do that if we have time. I know I started late, I apologize for that. And I think there's somebody streaming after me, although there might be a smidge of overlap or of time between. So, okay, we're gonna get back to the barther though. We need to, I wanna stay on target here. Keep on track, Adamantia, where do you wanna go? We're going back to Bree. Um, so you started on Dwaro Delph in 2011 and then on Gladden when the servers merged. The update 29, the question is, did update 29 happen today? It actually happened yesterday, um, and there, uh, there's a page for it with all of the, um, uh, the update notes. There you go, at lotro.com slash en slash wildwood. Um, and I did actually go running around there yesterday, and it's really cool. Uh, I, re I really like the new area. It has both the kind of... Um, a little bit of the, you know, things aren't as, as peachy keen in... Middle Earth as you want them to be. Like you, you get a little bit of that feeling like things have started to happen, but at the same time, it's still, it seems light um, and bright, even though you're in forests and um, it, it still has enough of that uh, lighthearted feeling to it that I, I really enjoyed it. So, okay, so you may have noticed that I popped over here to Bree using my travel to Bree skill. And now I'm gonna go to the festival grounds using the horse here. So you don't need to get a new map to get back out here to the festival every day. It's really easy to get here. All right, so we're gonna go and talk to... Uh oh I got in here too fast. I let them load up. So we need to talk to Buttercup. Oh wait, no, that's the other thing. Where the rare flowers bloom? Nope, that's the other one. Gosh, so many things I wanna show you. All right, we're gonna go and talk to the brother though. Oh, I'm a little behind them stuff here. Before, yeah, before the button I used the chat having the latest messages function. Yeah, that's true. So someone was talking about with the dances before they had the little button there. You know, you, if you are in your chat and you just click up, it shows you the like the last things that you've posted, that you've typed. And so that is a quick quick way to, to do that. Um, so cool. Um, Yes, no legs. <laughs> it is a cute scarf. That is, that is one of the, I, it's such a little detail, and yet I get so much use out of that scarf, out of the ascot. They made a luminous forest. I don't know, it just, it felt, it, it, it didn't feel dark and oppressive like, um, you know, like your Mirkwoods or, you know, some of those forests and, or even like the old forest. It didn't feel, I didn't feel like I was getting lost all the time. I just, I really enjoyed it. I like the area. So I, I, I suggest you go check that out. Um, okay. He says, the brother says, you have returned, Adamantia. Did you find my brother in time? Was there any truth to the rumor that some strain of the flower might remain within the Shire? You tell him about the sunflowers and his brother's decision to remain in Middle Earth for now. He looks at you thoughtfully, and after a moment, a smile lightens his features. He says, I am conflicted, my friend. I did not mean to gainsay my brother's choice, for I know when he made it, the decision was not easy, and he felt it strongly. I would not tell him otherwise, and I did not wish to make him stay. 
But when you went in search of him, when it seemed the uh, anorlosomite bloom still somewhere in the Shire, I confess I did wonder what I would say if he chose to stay. Could our journeying days come again? Where might we go? I have come up with just the right destination, Adamantia. I will suggest to my brother that we let our wandering feet bring us to the Southlands. There is a so-called master of herbs in Minas Tirith that I would propose, propose we visit. He is possessed of a number of misconceptions that Ed Lothan and I are well prepared to correct. We two elf brothers will depart in springtime, buoyed by the breeze and a spring in our step on another journey like those we, we took of old. Thank you for helping my brother and me, Adamantia. Perhaps the sun will smile upon us and our paths will cross in some distant land. Until then, my friend, farewell. So that is a nice conclusion to his part of the story. And it's funny because they mention the herb master and I keep forgetting to check, but I, it makes me wonder if, if we run into him later on, like did the, did the devs remember to write him in or, or kind of is he in the background somewhere? So that would be kind of a fun little thing. Um, oh, okay, so there is um, some weather happening for Eldoleth. I hope you, yeah, stay safe. Some tornado-y type stuff. Okay, so back to the initial guy who gave us this quest in the first place, the guy who's kind of running the area. And he says, I saw you. Oh, let me hang on. I have all my emotings over here. So let me cheer here. <laughs> he says, I saw you leave without taking care of my own problem, Anna Mancha, and I must admit, at first I was rather cross with you. Did you forget I asked you to ensure the visiting herbalist did not cause any further disturbances? But shortly after you departed, I noticed something most unusual. Uh, they stopped their drinking and their carousing and instead began speaking quietly among themselves. Well, the sparks of my curiosity were set aflame, and I took a casual stroll by their table. It, they seemed to be questioning the merits of some long-held belief, and the discussion had them shaken into politeness. What a strange turn of events. I do not know what part you played in this argument about flower strains, and neither do I know if they decided this plant called Anarlosa and the one called Analarth are truly one and the same, but I do believe you may have given them something to think about. And while they're thinking, they are done causing disturbances. <laughs> in conclusion, you have earned these spring leaves after all. Spend them at your leisure and enjoy the festival. So we get 18 spring leaves. We are well on our way to getting that mount. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> Tornado Watch is northwest of us currently by a couple counties. Oh, that's good. Well, yeah, definitely stay safe. So I'm in a hobbit kinship and sometimes I see some of my kinnies running around here. So I'm trying to make sure I'm not being rude and ignoring them. Okay, so we are done with these folks. Hello, fellow hobbits. All right. And mm -hmm. Red Baron says, howdy folks. Howdy, Red Baron. Oh, you like the cover on the sofa. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. Um, so I l was taught how to crochet at some point in the past. And um, so w I was involved in, in co-making a blanket with, some, with my sweetie. And we finished the blanket and we had some leftover yarn. And I had gotten so used to working on the blanket that I'm like, well, I want a blanket on the couch now. So I started working, I found a pattern where you do like a different stitch all the, you know, you know, do this for a while. Okay, now do this for a while. And it goes and it moves through a bunch of different stitches. Um, so I thought that's great. I can use up a bunch of yarn that way. And so that is what this has been. Um, the color for the pattern is like 14 different colors and I had 11. So you know, it's been a little bit of making it up as you go and switching things around. And um, yeah, it's called a spicier life blanket. Uh, it's yeah, if you use Ravelry, uh, it's a fun website uh, where there's lots of patterns and people talking about things and sharing their projects and that sort of thing. So that's, that's cool. Um, but yes, thank you for noticing. It's been a, a bit of a, a joy for me to be creating something and uh, um, yeah. It's, it's been a kick. It's not finished. Um, if, if any of you are, are fiber arts people, you'll recognize that these are all strings that need to be woven in. And 
that will be not as bad as the lamp post, but quite quite a <laughs> hindrance to my free time, perhaps. Uh, luckily, I can do that sometimes, like when I'm riding from one place to another and there's no swift travel. <laughs> it's time to weave in some ends. <laughs> So it is handmade. So thank you for uh, for noticing. That's um that's very kind. Um. So okay. So I uh, let's see. We've got about twenty five more minutes, assuming that Red Baron is coming on here <laughs> at three o'clock Eastern. Um, we're as you may have noticed in the background, I've been kind of delivering wine. So what you do is yes, you pick up uh, the wine from the table, and there were three tables to take it to. And I did the first two, and the last one we're going to take over here. If it's been a while since somebody took any wine over there, the area will be kind of um, cleared out. And then when you show up with the wine, more people show, start to show up, more of the NPCs show up. So that's kind of fun. And sometimes they'll be saying random things like, I think it's this lady or this lady. They'll be like, why are you standing in my food? <laughs> <laughs> it just cracks me up. There's there's lots of little little things that are said by the NPCs as you run by, and they delight me to no end. I, I have to say, I am so glad that they put those in there, and I hope they never take them out, and I hope they include them with any new festival they put out because it's so much fun. All right, so we're going to talk to Aaron here because we just took care of the pretty parched party goers. Um, and he says that he can tell that the deliveries were met with much appreciation. Uh, you have earned these spring leaves, both of them. <laughs> and at the same time, put my mind at ease. Oh, I hope everyone is having a good time. When the party goers find they're once again parched, there will always be need for someone willing to bring them what they need. So check back with me from time to time, my useful friend. Perhaps tomorrow we will check back with you. Now, if you are, um... A person who enjoys using milestones and you don't have like milestone debris uh, this is a really convenient way to get to and from the festival I just I use my return debris and I don't have a problem with that so uh, here's Ada Musgrove she is the one who will teach you the dances of men so dance man one and dance man sorry dance man and dance man two yeah um, let's see you never do the race but the maze and the other stuff um, you're going to go do some wild... Oh, so Red Baron, who's on after me, is going to do uh, go and check out Wildwood. So if you've got the time, you should stick around and, uh, and watch them go through the Wildwood, because like I said, it was uh, I really enjoyed the area. Okay, so um, let's see. Why do these folks already know me? Oh, because they also would have given me the quests to go check out the garden in uh, Dillon, where the shoe stomping happens. And um, the other one where the rare flowers bloom, that's... Oh, Avery, back in Brie. Darn it. Okay, that's just going to have to be next time. Um, so here we've got our various uh, maze people. They're, you know, they've got different challenges for us. For example, this person... I forget which one she is. Um, this one wants us to go find the tweens that are being, being obnoxious. Actually, you know, we're going to go ahead and pick up that one. So she says, I come here every year to enjoy the greenery and get away from the noise of my home. I wanted to get lost in the quiet and the smells of spring, and instead I come on the day when the tweens from the Shire arrive. We're not that bad. Uh, well, maybe we are. I'm not a tween anymore, by the way. I'm out of my tweens. So you wouldn't believe the mayhem inside the maze. Please, can you make them go away? Make them be quiet. They're, they're running around, herring, annoying everything on two legs. So we'll go ahead and accept that one. Now, with hers, once you accept it, there's other ones you cannot accept as well, like, mm, I thought it was the beer one. Uh, let's see, that one's the drink the beers and get knocked all over the place. Uh, his is the, oh, find, um, put up signs that are misdirecting the missing elves. There's some elves that went inside and got lost. Um, hers, oh, maybe hers is the elves that got lost. Okay, hers, her friends, the elves, are inside and they're lost. Um, the, the dwarf says go put some signs inside to, to, Get the elves more lost. Um, this guy is run through the maze on on a certain time. But this guy right here, Tob Sandyman, he um, yes, he's a member of the In League. <laughs> he's had a bit to drink. Um, so he wants you to go search the maze for an In League artifact. 
Now, once you do that, your reward is either an in-league sinister keg, which is hilarious, or two spring leaves. And you can do this every day as long as you're a member of the in-league. Oh, and you also get in-league reputation. So I have picked up the green challenge, but you can't pick that up if you're not a member of the in-league. Uh, so just an FYI there. I'm good for an emotional narrator, like in drama movies. <sighs> oh, thank you. I just, you know, I appreciate the amount of effort they put into um, creating these storylines for us. And I, I just, I really um, enjoy immersing myself in this world. And so I like to do what I can to help others find that experience as well. So hopefully you're having a good time with it. All right. So let's get going here. So we were told to go find an artifact of the, of the inlig. Well, guess what? I found one. <laughs> it's this thing. Uh, it is itself a sinister keg. So we go and we click on it. Are you sure that was wise? Everything goes a bit fuzzy. Now we have to find the exit. Thankfully, I know where the exit is, but we also have that kind of motion um, debuff on us, right? So, oh, there was a, a tween. I wonder if I can get him. Probably not. Yeah, I think I'm too drunk. Hey, let's have a shouting contest. Yeah, I was like that when I was a tween, but I grew up, like, I'm in my 30s now. So, like, you guys should know better. <laughs> All right, so the tweens are showing up on the map, but I don't think we're going to be able to catch any of them right now. We are too out of it. And look, we've got a minute and 45 seconds to still get out. Thankfully, this set of, this maze, I know the path to get through. Uh, well, to there and out. Now, when it comes to the other things in the maze, I don't find everything so quickly. But anyway, so, all right. Off we go. On my trusty Yule steed. And we're going to zoom around back to the front. So you got to go back around to the front of the maze to turn that in. So. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. So we have two German streamers. Um, yeah, I live in the Netherlands, just FYI. I do not, I'm not fluent in Dutch. Ik spreek in beetje Nederlands. My Nederlands is slacked. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> that's, that's about it. Yeah. All right. He's like, do I know you? <laughs> to the roar bowler, Brandon Boss and his fine brew. Hooray. So we're going to get increased reputation with the in league. Um, and then we choose whether we want a keg or some leaves. I'm going to take some leaves today. I'll have to go back to my house and see if I have a keg already. I probably do. But if I don't, I'll get one tomorrow. All right. And Hello, Gil here, me with something? he's funny. Uh, he's like, hey, isn't it a nice Fine spring day. This is just the sort of weather that makes a festival so pleasant. The gentle breezes and the bright new greens. Are you looking at that maze yonder? That is just what I was thinking of too. It is a fine day indeed to be lost in the foliage. So you wish to try your luck at picking a path? That is a worthy goal. I went just the other day in record time. I'll warrant you can't get through even if I gave you a more than generous amount of time. In fact, I'd be willing to wager a fair prize on that very challenge. Give a shout. If you get lost and need me to come looking, I'll not think less of you. Some people get quite lost in such a confusion of ways, but do not walk so quick that you forget to savor the sweet smells of green growing things, for you'll not find them any other time of the year. Dude, you should come see the Shire. We're, we got green growing things all the time. Okay, but now we're going to be on a timed quest. It's not until you enter the maze that it's timed, um, but it will be once we get in there. So let me show you. In we go. You lived near Kaiserslautern in, ah, that definitely sounds a little more German than Dutch, yep. All right, so we're in the hedge maze. Now, um, the thing about if you get lost, you can holler for help. I don't see where it is, but there's a button. Pretty sure there's a button 
that you can push and it, it just teleports you back out, but you can only use it like once every half hour. I may have covered it up actually. I don't need it. But anyway, so okay, so I gotta find my way through the maze in the next five minutes. Well, luckily I know how to get to the middle, which is here. And then I know once I'm in the middle, I make a U-turn around this. Oops, sorry, a little bit of lag there. And then we go ziggity zag over here. Look at the tween being obnoxious. Oh, I think that person caught him. Nope, maybe not. Oh, catching those tweens is so hard. No, oh, oh, wait, maybe. Did I get him? Oh, yeah. I Those I struggle with. Okay, anyway, so I do the jiggity jag, and then I come over here towards the back. Now, sometimes a tween appears back here, too. Maybe I'll pause for a second and see if he shows up. Because, you know, I know how to yell at them, being a hobbit myself. No, they're not showing up. Okay, we'll just go ahead and leave. Because we have found the exit, so we have passed the test of that other person. We made it through the maze in the amount of time allotted to us. Now, we can't go back that way, <laughs> so we have to go back around. Because honestly, I'm, if I could run back through, I might catch a tween or two on the way. But that's okay. All right. Um, cool. Talking about German locations. Awesome. You live in England and your English is bad. <laughs> I like it, Red Baron. I don't know if you don't need Dutch, you could you could try and teach me. No, we're we're taking we've done we're doing lessons and and it's much easier to learn more Dutch when we're out and about when you know and surrounded by people who are speaking Dutch. I start to pick it up and I start to get the meter of it and and understand what they're what they're saying. Um, but we're just not surrounded by it right now. So in the future. All right, so, oh, you startled me. I did not expect to see you for another several hours, at least. You did rather well, but you're going to have to go much faster if you're going to beat my time. Never mind. I am impressed, just the same. Uh, come to think of it, you deserve a reward. Accept this token of my respect for a maze master in training. I hope that you enjoyed the greenery as much as I did when I went through. All right, so we finished his quest. Uh, here's his next one, a speedy errand. Hello again. The spring weather is pleasing. Rain or shine, is it not? I see that you are still looking at the hedges of the maze yonder. Do you wish to challenge your own best time? That is an admirable goal. I do not think you are yet ready to challenge mine. I think a good compromise will be your running of the maze within just over half of the time previous allotted. So three minutes should do the trick. My minute record is not to be outdone, of course. And don't forget to shout if you get lost and me to, need me to come looking. I'll not think less of you, but some people get mightily lost in a confusion of ways. But I'm afraid that you may miss the scenery and smells if you are able to carry on at a pace that you'll get out so quick as this challenge demands. Well, we're going to do it anyway. Um, oh, nice. Eldless says they did go through the Netherlands and met up with a friend in Amsterdam and Utrecht. Um, let's see, did I miss anything else? Oh, the code for the week is Defend Me. It's a Tome of Defense for 90 minutes. Um, awesome. Um, cool. Eldoleth gets some German streamers. Or stream, Germans watching her stream, I should say. Um, yeah, you never catch the twin back here? I see them show up, and once in a while I catch them, I think kind of in this area. But, yeah. Um, I've never seen quick bars full of mimotes only. <laughs> so, if you weren't here at the beginning, uh, you may have missed the part where I mentioned that I am all about the social aspects of Lotro. <laughs> Some people are into the raids and the Remachance and the gear and, and um, those things. I collect pets and emotes and mounts and outfits <laughs> and I hang out with my with my friends and um, have a wonderful time so yeah if you are, are feeling the same way may I recommend to you Laurelyn if you are of the Hobbit persuasion may I recommend to you Green Dragon Fridays <laughs> on Laurelyn uh, where we meet at the Green Dragon on Fridays all right. Oh, you did not startle me this time. I had a bit more faith in you, though I feel secure in my own record. You will never beat that. Oh, really? Hello. 
He says, very well. And this is, and then, so this one right here, this Fool's Errand, is a repeatable. The other two, you can only do once each festival. Um, but once you get past those two, uh, then this get through the maze in one minute is a repeatable every day. Because he is like, yes, well, you really can't seem to get enough of that hedge maze. No matter, no one will ever beat my best time. Only one minute and a few seconds more. I'm sorry to have to break this to you, but it is folly to think that you can match my time. Uh, try if you must, but I simply do not wish for your hopes to be disappointed. It can be so discouraging to fail. You still mean to try, do you? Well, very well. You have one minute. I'm not worried. No one will ever beat my time. Now, please, leave me be. I am trying to enjoy the spring before it fades into another sweltering summer, and I cannot do it if you are hovering about me like a gnat. <laughs> so I appreciate how this character, uh, he starts off a little bit more cheery and chipper, cheerful, and throughout the time he starts to get more and more annoyed. Um, okay, so I also will point out that I am very grateful that this maze is the same every day and that all of these races can use the same path because I would not wish to try and go through multiple different tracks. The, the maze in Wistmead, where it's different each of the five days, and then there's two different paths to go through, the fast and the, the cheaty one, or sorry, the regular one and the cheaty one, I still haven't got those memorized yet. So come, come fall, you can watch me do those. <laughs> It'll be hilarious. So yes, so I have all my emotes, and funny thing is uh, there was a concert on Landreval, and I have Adamantia there as well, so I had to dress her up similarly so my friends on that were there for the concert from Laurelin would recognize her. And then I put all my moats in the same places because I'm so used to where I have these located. So I have uh, the wave in two, the first two bars because sometimes I miss the first one. And then goodbye for the last one. And then we have uh, munch because, you know, we're eating food sometimes and sometimes we're drinking because, you know, we're hanging out at the, at the pub. And then uh, the bottom we have cheer, and we have clap. Oh, I should tell this guy I went through his maze. Hello there. He says, please do not come around to bother me anymore. <laughs> Your very presence somehow saps the beauty out of a fine spring day. I find that I do not enjoy it quite so much when you are near. <laughs> come to think of it, I do not like the maze after all. <laughs> the mazes after all. They are rather too green for my liking. Too much green is unpleasant in certain lights. Here, take your reward. Enjoy your silly maze. If it's such a silly, silly, pointless thing can truly be enjoyed. <laughs> but the nice thing is that it gives us one uh, more event towards our 10. So we have finished a taste of spring. Let me see if I can get that under a, let me move over here. So we have finished a taste of spring. Uh, so we are ready to go back and talk to Sergeant Tom and turn in our wrapper. And that's actually really good timing. So we're gonna do that and so if you remember, we will find Tom. Oh, we have a deed that was bestowed upon us. Oh, spring is dandy. So there are, as I have mentioned, uh, a lot of different things you can do in the spring festival. And so this is kind of a smorgasbord of all the various things you can do. Uh, and if you do all of them, then you get this um, title, spring dandy. <laughs> So, because Adamantia is brand new to the Spring Festival, she hasn't worked on any of that. We're going to go ahead and jump off our horse. All right, let's see if we can get in here. Boy, look at all these naked people. Good thing you're wearing your pajamas. All right, there he is. Hi, Tom. Poor Sergeant Tom. Taste of Spring. So he says, my, you're a festive one. I hope you're having a fun time at the spring festival. It seems you're having a swell time, so perhaps you'll enjoy one of these rewards. Here you are, come back tomorrow and I shall have more rewards for you. So we'll go ahead and finish that now. And that gave us three spring leaves. Oh, I guess we could try and talk to him. How much what to get me you? a thing? How much for a horse? Oh, I need 40 and I have 28. Okay, so we're not there yet. Um. But there are many good Hobbit events. Yeah, so many good Hobbit events. Oh, there's that horse again. I can't wait till I get it. That's gonna be nice. And I gotta figure out what I'm gonna wear. Okay, so um, let's see. 
<laughs> You're making this great game even greater by focusing on socializing and the fun side of the game. I appreciate this. Well, thank you. Um, you know, there's a lot of streamers out there doing various things. And so I, I enjoy the social parts of it, right? So I, uh, I'm glad that I'm able to be in a position where I can share that with other people. And uh, hopefully others can feel validated in their choice of, uh, of enjoying the social aspects and, and join in if that's not something you had uh, tried before but you would find of interest. So um, Lotro has been a great way to reach out and connect with people. Yeah, yeah, it has been really good uh, during this time of being indoors a lot. I have immersed myself in uh, being a part of Middle Earth and it's been, it's been perfect. It's been really, really good. So how good and active is Laurelin these days? I tried playing three years ago after the server merged, didn't like it because of the ongoing war behind, between diehard role-playing players and regular folks. I can't say that I have a definitive answer to that in the sense that I kind of exist in my own little pocket. Um, like I do read world chat um, and pay attention to that sometimes, but I found a kinship that I just adore and um, I spend most of my time on here with my kinship. And um, so with, with those folks, it's, it's wonderful, it's perfect. Um, so if you were to say how good and active is Laurelin, I would say my experience has been wonderful. Um, my kinship is fantastic and every time I'm on, if I want to interact with people, either there's somebody on or I can you know message in Discord and say, hey, anybody wanted to go do something? But from the wider world perspective, um, I'm not 100% sure. I don't think there's an active, like, butting of heads between the diehard role players and the regular folks. Um, I definitely feel like it's a role-playing server. So when people come in with, like, a, a username, like, you know, gonna shoot this down or, or something that's very not in-world, you know, I, I, uh, I wish they wouldn't do that because I love the immersion that I can get in Laurelin. And uh, if I don't want that kind of immersion, I can go to Evernight or something. So um, that, that's just my opinion on it. I would prefer people would engage in role-playing or role-playing light if they're going to be, like, you know, going around a person. Like, I'm not just gonna run through here with my horse. Um, you know, they would go around me. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and get off my horse to make it easier for other people to get around me. You know, those kinds of little considerations I wish others would do as well. Um, and I think the Laurel and community that I engage with is good about that. So so that I, I don't know if that answers your question, <laughs> but it gives you some more some more data to work with. Uh, so how's that? Okay, uh, let's see. And uh, let's see, Master, oh sure, thanks Arbany. Uh, Master the Master says, I love most the Yule because I can get so many tokens every single day and collect enough to barter. Yeah, tell me about it. I got so many Yule tokens. Um, I, okay, let me just, as a real quick aside, this is so silly. So this was how I kept track of all the different characters I have and all the different Yule festival things you can get and who had gotten them and like which um, characters had gotten them and on which servers I had them so I could put them into the shared wardrobe space. So um, I ran out of room on that side and I started on this side. <laughs> And yeah, I went a little bit nuts with the collecting of um, Yule stuff. I can't say that I won't do the same with the spring. So, okay, we're getting close to time and I don't wanna take up any Red Baron's time. So let me quickly just show you that there's a flowers gathering thing that happens. So you'll see flowers, pockets of flowers all around. Sometimes people are like, what are these flowers? What's going on? Well, that's what's going on. So you come over here to Avery Crab Apple. He has a little quest, a little, um, uh, Mist Loves quest that resolves out nicely. And then you spend time going out and picking flowers. Um, and then you can turn in those flowers here to uh, Mr. Mugwort and get various boxes of various things. Like that giant flower you see sometimes people are walking around going boom, 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 boom. Um, yeah, the <laughs> which I find delightful actually. So anyway, that's where you can get that. Um, okay, so uh, I think I am going to start wrapping it up here. I really appreciate you guys all coming along and, and being here with me. This has been um, a great time. So thank you so much. Um, let's see, where's, oh, it's gone. No, it's not. Um, 
All right. So the next streamer, I believe, is going to be Red Baron. I think he's not coming on in too long. Um, I have been a little redhead, so thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back next week for more Spring Festival. So be sure to tune in and uh, bring any questions you might have for me there. Um, let's see. And anything I didn't get to this week, I'm going to try and, um, and do some fun things there and show you some of the things to walk through. Uh, so yes, so thank you for joining me on this journey through the Spring Festival here in Lord of the Rings Online. I really enjoy my time in Middle Earth and I hope you found this stream enjoyable and informative. So wherever you go and whatever you do, I encourage you to stay connected to the Hobbit side of your heart. Have a great day. Bye now. <laughs>